Hi guys and welcome to episode 2 of Explicit Content. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we did our last episode but we're back in the office now, full team. So yeah, we're going to try and box off quite a couple so hopefully we'll have a few few more coming up in the in the next few weeks um how are you guys doing good got some amazing feedback from episode one so that was that was great thanks everyone i liked episode one i feel like we could have swore more but <laughs> is that the goal now for, for episode i'm gonna see how onwards. many f-bombs i can drop that's gonna be my like goal just make job yeah. jonathan's life harder yeah but to be honest, you you did well with the bleeps last time, Jonathan. So um, I think you should be able to capture them. But we're back in the office, yeah. um, f- like you said. So we've got a full team, and I think it's the perfect time to do this episode. It's very relevant. Yeah, yeah. So um, this week we're going to be talking about how to manage um, your workload in a fast-paced environment. Um, I think for us guys here at D twenty two. We were just talking before we started filming, you know, how quickly we've grown uh, our team. You know, when we I started the team, about 18 to 20 of us now, we're in the 40s, we're getting bigger clients um, and it's, you know, it's more pressure. There's more work to be done. Um, you know, the time frames are smaller. It's a lot less relaxed than it was back in the day. Um, so yeah, I think we, we, we were just gonna share our experiences for for people like you, if you if you know if you're working under pressure, and just some tips on how you can um, you know not crumble and and, and do a good yeah. job. Um, it's a good one, that, I think, because obviously in an agency environment, we are especially our team, we are writing a lot of yeah. content. We're talking multiple pieces each daily. Um, so yeah, good one, That's especially for people who are in an agency environment. Yeah, I agree. I think. As well, um, it's still relevant now um, for new writers that come in because we haven't always been like this hectic. But like Will said, it's a sign of of growth, yeah. and you should just roll with it, roll yeah. with the punches because more work, more clients, more opportunities at the end of the day. Definitely, definitely. Um, so we've got like a couple of tips here and there, but I think the first one that I was gonna touch on is is leaning on um on your team i think it's relevant because obviously we're all in a team together um well molly you're not well, me and you're not in our team me and Willa, yeah. you, you, you wish you were in our team you you you, well, you weren't in a team then you're not in a team yeah. but now me and raz are in a team um but yeah i think that's you know probably one of the best pieces of advice from me is to always feel as though you you know you can go and speak to someone and use someone else's expertise if you're ever feeling like you're struggling is just not to be afraid to to, to shout out and and lean on your teammates yeah i agree i think from from my perspective we made a big switch a few years ago to have clients play so originally everyone wrote for every client obviously that comes with its own issues and strengths as well but when we split the clients, I think initially it can feel like it's, it's all on you. Um, and it is, like you're responsible for the deliverable, you're responsible for the results, and that's fine. But I think something we've tried to build in into the team is all the work that we do is a team effort. Yeah. Like it's not, for example, Jacob, you have X number of blogs, and when you're done, like you're fine. Like mm-hmm. It's never that case. It's, okay, now it's time to help out someone else. Yeah. And you might have to pick up some stuff from other people. Um so yeah, I wouldn't feel like if you have your own list of clients or you're working a team, definitely don't just assume I've done my bit. Like you guys, just get on with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's quite important. I liked what you said about um, everyone helping out because I'm helping out this week because I'm always an honorary member of the she, country. She's team. helping out because she's trying to win the employee of the month award. She's not doing it out of the, yeah, out she's of the been, goodness she's of the been heart. doing some bribing. I'm yeah, so you're in the yeah. people. So just for context, everyone, the we're back in the office and there's a seating plan and because nobody really knows what to do with me they've pity put me with the content team yeah so i think a normal person would say oh you guys need help i will help you and molly yesterday i was sat with her and she's well she she's saying to jacob two to sainsbury's meal deals and you know vote for me for employer the i think that says more about jacob that he's bought can be bought like I think, you know, if I'm soliciting votes because I'm doing good work rather yeah. than... That's fine, yeah. Th- thank you for helping. 
obviously. But that's, we appreciate that. But it goes back to leaning on people, yeah. and I'm still a part of the team, whether you like it or not. Oh. Um, <laughs> but it goes to show like if you know people's strengths and weaknesses you can delegate things when it comes to like crunch hour yeah, when, you, when you've got you know 50 blogs to do and it's coming to the time when maybe people have had time off or people are busy on other tasks you want to make sure that you have people you can rely on mm. and that was number one for me when I came in it was knowing that if I needed help or mm. if I couldn't get something done or I needed your expertise, I could just ask you. Yeah. Just try and get my employee of the month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, Reza. She knows you know what I she's always, doing. That's what's no, nice yeah. you. you guys know I have a lot of time for you. And when I still now, like mm. if I have a problem with emails or I'm not sure, I'll come to you. Yeah. You, you know, you write the content for D22, Reza. How many blogs have you written now for that damned blog? 167. I'm going to 200 and I'm going to retire. As long as I beat Paul. Right. Yeah. Well, he's, that's he's fine. My, he's on my tails now. I can yeah. make that happen. That's a, that's a good point you made about leaning on each other's strengths. I think half of it is just like the volume of work but i think especially in content when we when we didn't have the split and everyone was writing for every client that we had there were some that we struggled with and i think a good example is jacob one of our he's the lead content marketer here he amazing writer i had a look in mind me saying he struggles on revival mm. and weavable and stuff mm. we've done some amazing content for them they love it but i think it's clear like you know that, that's where your strength is yeah Whereas you can chuck a lot of technical stuff his way and he'll make it sound amazing, but yeah. he'll struggle with how to dress a four poster bed. And that's it. I mean, the client loved like his weavable work, which he was surprised by. But mm-hmm. I think that's another thing that we learned is, yeah, yeah we should ha- all have the knowledge as well about, about who we're writing for and stuff. But if you know you're going to struggle on a certain topic or a certain client, you know, your team members who are skilled in that area, mm. like when a technical one drops in, Jacob is the go-to. Like, yeah. That's kind of what he's he's known for now, like the technical guy who can get yeah. it done. Yeah. Um. So I think that that's you know ident- if you're in a team, identify who's talented at what and who's skilled in what area, and try and lean on them where you can. Definitely. And I think a point you just raised there about you know knowledge and knowing your clients is something else that we were going to touch on, and that is you know doing your research and doing your like due diligence. You know before you before a client's you know, you take them on, like make sure you, you know, you're doing your research um, and you're always learning um, because things change, don't they? We work in like a reactive job where things are quickly moving. So, you know, one minute, our, one of our clients might be selling this product, the next minute things might change and they're selling something else. So it's just always being up to date with, with what's going on in the industry, what's going on with that particular client. And it can be hard when you're working in like a fast paced yeah. environment you know you, you for me i i will try and just focus on doing the work and the learning time is always like oh, do i have to do it like but you need to it's important because especially for us when we're taking on bigger clients and more technical clients like you say you can't just wing it like yeah. you'll, you'll get sussed out and straight away won't you, you you've got to do the groundwork yeah, if you're writing an email or a blog or a download on the day and that's the day you start doing research on the pain points you mean the personas you yeah you just, you're going to get chewed out. And, and it's, it's easy to spot. As yeah. well. You can see when someone hasn't done their research. Yeah. And speaking of being... Um, is, <laughs> wait, get rid of that. <laughs> wow. No, no, no. Wow. No, I meant... I mean, I mean you <laughs> we don't have a projects team. Like... <laughs> no. I wanted a nice segue. Oh, I wanted a nice segue. Yeah, that, well, that was a nice segue. Get, rid- <laughs> get rid of that. Jonathan, please edit that out. Um, but basically, what I meant is, is Russ is crying. I mean, I mean, you're like you're buggered if you um, don't have a projects team, and we're very fortunate that we have um, we have Tom B, Heather, and Faisal behind yeah. the scenes. They also have a podcast. If you want to check it out, that's yeah. a solution. Get yourself a Tom B. Get yourself a Heather. Get yourself yeah. get yourself a Faisal. That that'll sort everything out. The, the good thing about that is when I was in the old office. Um, we didn't have a projects team until Tom B arrived and it was all like off a wall we were using like base camp and you couldn't really hold anyone accountable it seems like Trello yeah mm. it was very basic so I think if you have if you have the budget and the resources to get something a bit more sophisticated than like a Trello board go for it but obviously you need people managing it and obviously we're thankful Tom B Faisal and Heather are constantly speaking with us yeah yeah. like that's how that I mean 
as an individual, you can manage it on your own. Like, I know what I need to do this week. But I know what I need to do today. Yeah. But having that support behind you, mm. like, yeah, to help you get the stuff done and manage it month by month, week by week, day by day, that's the key for me. It's communication, isn't it? Yeah. It's that level of communication, which you naturally, you know, working in an agency, we're all in it together at the end of the day. We all have the same goal. We all want yeah. to grow the if agency. If something goes wrong, then you know some there'll be equal people accountable like it's it's you know there's we've got to communicate and, and i think that's been a challenge for us being at home we've all faced like challenges um being at home but we've got through it um and now we're back in the office just even after you know two days being here you can fully feel the difference and it's good to see everyone like going over to each other and chats yeah. meetings face to face yeah. so that level of communication definitely comes into it as well yeah I agree. Um, I think communication is underlying in, in everybody's success of the agency because without it, who knows who's responsible for what? Who knows who's accountable for what part of that turning cogs in the machine that is the agency? Yeah. And it's a, like you said about asking for help as mm. well. Like that is such an important part. If you can't do something, it's one thing to like try and do it on your own, but it's it's a bigger it's a bigger thing to know it's above you maybe or that you can't do it and yeah. you do need someone to help you yeah and sometimes it does get it does get super fast paced mm-hmm. and you're in over your head and you're overwhelmed but it's it's important to just think oh i, I could ask someone for help yeah and nobody wants to do that yeah because it's you're prideful you mm. i can smash this out i can work over the weekend yeah I won't have a work-life balance because I'll just get it all done because mm. I want to, you know, I want to make sure that I'm accountable and I've done my bit. Mm. But there's so many other people who would be willing to help you in an agency. Yeah. Um, and why projects is important is because they can see where capacity is yeah. and where other people's strengths are. Yeah. So, and like, for example, um, you, you have so much expertise in marketing in general, Will. So... <laughs> Your one, huh? Yeah, yeah, she, she knows what she's, she's doing, doesn't she? Any, any, yeah. Any Jolly, yeah, John, you're a talented man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I just mean that, for example, like when we're back in the office, like earlier on, Christine mm. came over, um, who's in the PPC team, to talk about um, some problems we were having with getting this LinkedIn leads into HubSpot. But he can come and speak to you about that. Yeah. And, like I know it's not like a, a big as an example of finding capacity to do like a download or something like that, but it's little things like that that make it easier or slow the pace down a little because mm. you know you have all these other experts who you can rely on to yeah. help you get it over the line. Yeah, and that and that allows you to, well, I think that, that comes into as well, like not being afraid to push back, like pride. Um, pride can come into it can't it sometimes and like you say you don't you know you don't you'd rather just give it a shot instead of say like I can't do it I feel like you know and I've done it before where I've been doing some work and it's I know it's I'm not writing with confidence I'm not writing that piece of content with much confidence but I'd much rather give it a crack than like push back but in hindsight you know someone's gonna be pissed off it's not gonna look great so sometimes you've just got to you just got to be honest, haven't you? You got to yeah. be blunt. And say, I, I don't think I can do this without mm. a bit more leeway. But that's just, again communication. Like deadlines will do that to you, though, in a fast-paced environment. You'll, yeah, you'll you'll push 100%. to do it. In an agency, clients don't give a f- how you're feeling. <laughs> I mean, sorry, that's harsh. But, but they're paying. They're, they're paying, they're paying for, for the yeah. pleasure. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they, they're expect expect you to complete the work by a certain time. Like their concern isn't how you're feeling. Like they've paid. They they want the work by a certain time. Yeah. That's why it's, it's on us and on projects to make sure we have the time and the capacity and stuff to do it. If that means, you know, as we said last week, dropping, well, last episode, dropping your ego and asking someone for help. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's the way to do it. It's not an individual effort, is it? It's team effort. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to leave your ego at the door, haven't you? Got to be um, comfortable with criticism. <laughs> Check out episode one. <laughs> man, plug it. Yeah. I think another thing as well for, for me is sometimes just with who I am, I can take things to heart and it can, ups, you know, I can get get a bit down if I feel like I've not done a great job. And yeah. I guess just, it's not life or death, is it? Like, you know, when, you, when you're feeling like you're under a bit of pressure sometimes, it's it's not the end of the world. Like, it, it's a learning curve. Yeah. We're, we're in, it's a, like I say, it's a journey, you know, without getting zen. Yeah. Um, but, we're, you know, we're, we're young, we're, we've not been, like, working, we're not madly experienced, we've been with 25 years, like, 
this kind of stuff makes you stronger when you flap in and you and you you know under pressure it, it, it you come out stronger and you end up doing better work in the long run so yeah just enjoy the ride i guess yeah. it's important to give yourself breaks as well mm. in a fast-paced environment when it's lunchtime go out go to sainsbury's spend an unfortunate amount on your meal deal that's lackluster um or you can go to the brewery i don't know but it's important to get out and and just with your colleagues or whoever yeah. and come back and you have a fresh mind after that whatever's bothering you or if it was so overwhelming if you come back you feel so much brighter and more productive anyway yeah um, and it's the same for yeah. five o'clock yeah there's, there's a lot you can just do as an individual as well like I think one of the learnings for me moving from freelance to an agency is don't map it out day by day. Mm. I'd say look at a weekly or even a month level knowing what deadlines you have to hit by the end of the month. Yeah. They can prioritise what to work on. Mm. It, in some cases, we've done, okay, I'm going to do all my technical, difficult stuff in the morning because what motivation do you have at 2 o'clock on a Friday That's afternoon no. yeah. to do something super technical? Yeah. So I think, obviously, work out what the deadlines are, work out what your priorities are, but yeah, just take a bit of ownership of it as well of what you're going to do by when yeah and you know just play it by ear because i think something we've done here is we always try and do the technical stuff early in the morning like you're in that writing zone yeah uh, that mindset uh yeah little things like that i think we do make all all the difference yeah because we all have different ways of working don't we like mm -hmm. I, I when we were doing rl 10 yesterday like i saw your to-do list and it's like the most pr neat precise to-do list i've ever seen and for, and for me i'm just I'm just a complete scatterbrain. Like I'll try and do a to-do list, and it'll just end up being an absolute shambles. So I think, like as well, just like adapting and just work how you work best. If you know what yeah. I mean, we all work differently. But if you might, you might not. You you know, you may end up trailing behind. But as long as you hit the deadline, like I think, just figure out how you know how you're most effective in the workplace and like dealing with that pressure. Yeah, I think as a team, it's always about that autonomy when. If we have a certain number to hit, not dictating, you need to do this many up per day. It's go in, do it. Like if you want to write four things in a day and two the next because you want to ease your afternoon, do it as long as you hit those deadlines. Yeah. Obviously, don't go home work at 7 p.m. or 10 p.m. like some of us have done in the past, but. Not naming any names. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, just make sure it gets done and plan your week out, plan your month out better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think as well it's like having, like you said, the autonomy and having the trust to know that you're accountable for success but in a way that works for you. And we're lucky that we work somewhere that sort of gives you that um, yeah. to work however you want to work, yeah. like whether it's Raz's crazy to-do list or Will's to-do list. Have you seen them, the to-do list? I have seen the to-do list. They're lists. like the neatest, like... Most precise to do lists, I like that. little boxes, like you got little tick boxes, not tick boxes, no, like they're all spaced out. Yeah. But I don't like wasting space on my what's page. your notebook like? Moleskin, have you got one? I've, moleskin, I've yeah. also got a moleskin, I've got a nice little Pokemon number here. I was say, all, all, all of this, you use code Molly for five percent off. Sometimes means f when a client throws a curveball your way and the deadlines are suddenly soon, it could be an event, yeah. it could be. You know, someone might be unhappy, they might need something sooner, they might be going to annual leave next week, so they need it mm. this yeah. day. So that is just the biggest curveball you could get. And again, it comes down to the benefit of having a projects team is you can say, okay, I'll move some stuff around, but they have the data to know when you can do it. Yeah. If it can be done, we might have to push back and say, look, we've already agreed on a deadline. Yeah. But yeah, I think though, for me, that's the most annoying thing when a curveball comes your way and you've planned out your month, okay, by the 27th, I've got this deadline, but now the event's been moved forward it's mm. your client's not going to be in now so now it's mm -hmm. actually the 12th by when you need it by um mm. that can be quite frustrating but yeah i mean it's easy to say go get yourself a project team it's not it's not that yeah. not that easy but yeah. i think having some data and some insights to when you can do it what your capacity is like for the month mm. that makes a massive difference i feel like we're just plugging projects throughout this, this, this is managing digital projects episode two we should just call it i love projects yeah that's what it is I and might get an I love Faisal t shirt yeah. for our yeah. next uh, podcast. Mr. F. Yeah. I think, as well, with what you were saying about making sure that not, well, not everyone can have a projects team. Mm -hmm. So, if you're not in an agency or you are like in an in house role, yeah. I think what you can do to manage your time is to maybe um, see how long things are taking you first. Because yeah. I think when you're in an in house role and you, you might not have the time dedicated to write a blog, 
you might pick it up a bit now and again throughout the week yeah. but you don't know how long that blog is taking you yeah. so how do you know that you'll have time for two more next week yeah. Yeah. so we, everything is timed for us because obviously we need to make sure we're profitable and that it's that we're in times and that we have enough team members to carry the workload mm. but in-house might not have that same sort of luxury yeah for us like if I may be a beginner, like three hours for a blog, maybe for a new person coming in. Depends on your industry as well. If it's super technical, yeah. then it could take you, you know, longer than that. But for someone who doesn't know how long a blog takes or how long something is, maybe just time yourself next time and yeah. see it's how you can multiply that. Type of content as well. Yeah. Uh, because when you, you, Emily and Ricky, put me through the ring and do the deep dives, yeah. they obviously take, they take a month. Mm. to do uh, and obviously project projects see when the capacity is for that but yeah i think that's good time or work out how long it's taking you to create content in the past so you work out from your emails you mm. know how long they've taken mm. how long your blogs have taken your premium pieces have taken do all of that and then you can map out okay and realistically i can only do six a week because yeah. that's the time i have yeah so and then at that point you won't be make you won't be agreeing to unrealistic deadlines yeah yeah i think obviously for, for like in inbound a lot of the content, especially you guys, right, is long form, isn't it? Like guides. So I imagine some people working in house probably wouldn't like write that mm. length yeah. of content. But I, you know, I find it crazy how you just manage to like, because you don't have like long amounts of time to like write out a guide, do you really? What, what, what is like the. Six hours? Six hours, but Andrew. It's kind of like ban on ebooks. Oh yeah, there's yeah, ban on ebooks. Yeah. There's, there's so many other things you can do that's not an ebook, by the way. There's you, a blog on that, by the you way. Can, yeah, there is a yeah. blog on that. <laughs> you want to ram some more frazzle? You can do a quiz. Yeah. You can do a playbook. You can do a checklist. <laughs> yeah. Just, Let me try it and see what how long it takes you. As yeah. well. like That's the key for me. Like You can't promise deadlines if you don't know how long it takes you to do a blog. Yeah. Or any other content piece. Um, you know, promising only the deadlines, knowing it takes you five hours to write something means you're never gonna hit the deadlines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You've just got it's that honesty, isn't it? And that building that relationship with the client for us, yeah. and that happens over time. And but yeah, it's uh, it can be stressful, but really, I think you just got to enjoy the ride. That's the thing for me. That's you know, I've I've had times where I've really just like felt like a you know upset or yeah. like I've let someone down, but. For me, it's just, it's a learning curve and you just yeah. got to enjoy it. 100%. It's, it's not been smooth sailing for no. years. You know, we've had our fair share of hurdles, but we've survived. We're still here. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's not, not the end of the world. There's always been crazy deadlines, yeah. but we've done them. Yeah. I don't think there's ever been a time where we've really missed a deadline ever because we've all like, like got and our together, heads together. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the team somewhere. mentality, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's where it makes a massive difference when or you feel like you can trust your team. Yeah. Yeah. And that's important. I, I think, yeah, I think I'd, I'd, I'd rephrase that saying, whatever's in our control, yeah, yeah. we've not missed, yeah. I'd say. Um, you know, sometimes stuff gets signed off late and whatnot. Mm. Um, yeah, but that's out of our yeah, hands. You, yeah. can't, you can't do anything about that. But where it's been sort of our responsibility with, with the help of the project team and our own, our own knowledge of what we can do and our own strengths, like mm. we've been able to knock something out quickly. This, yeah. mm. But deadlines are just the deadlines and if you communicate with the client and you just tell them like i know you want a, yeah. a, a white paper next week but here's what needs to go into it and being confident that if it was going to get done right by you um, then this is what you, they need from you so knowing that for example we did um like a public sector client and like healthcare mm. there were lots of interviews that we needed mm. and they were great we got so many great insights but it meant that the deadline might need to be shifted mm. to get all those great insights in yeah and they understood and it was it was moved but some people might not so it's on about you saying what goes into an ebook because it's not mm -hmm. just writing a couple of words and well a lot of words a lot goes into it planning you know, making it coherent, making it readable, engage. Like, would you sit and read seven pages of content? Yeah, quite, quite a lot involved. And, yeah. and making sure it's proofed and QC'd and that every little part of the team has had their input to make it as, you know, 99% as it could go to the client. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff, man. Yeah. So hopefully we got some good, you know, good tips in there for you all. Um, so I think that moves us on to, to our game.
Which we've decided to change the format of a little bit because, because my fault. Though. I'll take the blame for yeah. that. It was uh, it was some big pressure last time, and I ended up coming up with one of the yeah a very very random uh, definition for for Raz's word. It wasn't very politically correct. Which I can't even remember what the word was. So uh -oh. e ecdesiac. Ecdesiast. Yeah. Will's guess was. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can say. Yeah. I don't think we can. I think we can. I think that what we can't say is the <laughs> other word that's more <laughs> offensive for it. Yeah. You know, well, I don't know. We blew it out the first time. Again, I've made Jonathan's life difficult yeah. again. Yeah. And another time, just blew that out again. Sorry, Jonathan. So what we're going to do this time is, is I've chosen a word and we've got two sentences that the word fits into. Right. Um, and then you guys have got to guess which sentence that word correctly like where it makes more sense yeah right. yeah okay cool. so the word I'll be is a team. I'll be a team. you're I'll be a team yeah okay i'm against and you you're against okay. me so if you get the get it right you two get the point right if i get it right i get a point i can't remember what what's the crack what's the point situation at the moment uh, we, no points no points no points yeah, no scores in the doors oh dear so this is this is pressure. you know there's some pressure on pressure. to get to get things moving cool so the word is doodle sack doodle sack <laughs> doodle sack okay it's a doodle <laughs> exactly i'm gonna tell you in a minute okay. but the two sentences are yeah the man played on his doodle sack until the break of dawn <laughs> and the second one is that guy is such a doodle sack i really want to punch him in the face right you said that guy played on his doodle sack yeah yeah well, not with <laughs> I was going to say with, but it could have sounded far too wrong. Right. What do you think a doodle sack is? Um, it, if it's used in the first sentence, it could be like an instrument, but if it's the second one, then it's like an idiot, isn't it? Like an imbecile. He's such a doodle sack. Yeah, he's such a doodle sack. What a doodle sack. I don't know, I feel like the first one's sort of out there. He's trying to throw us off. I think that's what... I, like an instrument. Yeah, like I think. Can you, say, can you say the first sentence again? The man played on his doodle sack until the break of dawn. He said he was going to say it with. But you can still play with an instrument. <laughs> True. Doodle sack. Doodle sack. Doodle, doodle sack. Do you know what doodle sack is? No. No idea. Uh, unfortunate. I I I feel like the sec I feel like it's the second one maybe. Like he's such a dude like an idiot. That's a safe option. Should we go? Should we go with he's such a doodle sack? Yeah. And what do we think it means? Like an imbecile? Yeah, we're going to go with the second... Oh, you sure, you sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll go with the second sentence with that, like an idiot. Okay. Like a jackass. Well, do you know what? You were on the right track, <laughs> but you veered towards the wrong ones because it is an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> and the instrument it is, is a bagpipe. Oh! Sack. So... Oh. That's one point oh. to me. Right, but we were so close, was it? We second guessed ourselves. You did, you did, but that's a psychological game I played with you there, yeah. you know. That, so yeah, that's what it is. A doodle sack is a bagpipe. Um, one nil to me. Unlucky guys. Great. You were so close oh, yet so God. far away. And um, you, and you, in the senses, we were the safe option. And, uh, yeah. I can't. I, I, I talked myself out it? of it. Yeah. Well, okay, so I, I mean, I don't think I'll ever use the word, <laughs> but um, I'll see if I can fit it in a sentence. That's a little challenge. Write some blogs. Do, put a doodle mm. something yeah, in. Yeah. Maybe yeah. get some like. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see it fitting in somewhere yeah. down the line. Yeah. I'll just put it in bit Digital tartan, 22. Bit of tartan, you know. D22 doodle sack. That's so, it. Yeah, we're up against it now. It's yeah. supposed to be you next week. Uh, so, well, whenever we do it, I think we're doing it on Friday, aren't we? We're, we're churning yeah. out. We're churning, churning them out. out the podcast, we're a production so we're... machine, both in and out of the podcast room. That's it. Um, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, I'm the next one, and I'll pick a lovely word for you guys um and i'll be hosting it i'm yeah. not 100 percent sure on what we're going to do yet because we've got so much we want to talk about yeah. but um yeah. we'll see you in the next episode we're a well old machine yeah so we hope you've enjoyed the podcast hope you got some useful tips there i guess you know there's quite a lot we talked about but managing you know your workload in a fast-paced environment isn't always easy but don't don't take life too seriously like yeah. work with your team like work you know and just enjoy it um so yeah Cheers for that, and look forward to the next episode. Thanks. I'm off to play my doodle set. <laughs> <laughs>